Elisa was one of our first students and she was so persistent. She was so focused and she really, um, I mean, she hit it out of the park. And so I cannot wait to uh, hear about her experiences since uh, idea. Yes, it's, it's great because I went through her work to create this presentation and she has so much work and she has also things she can show obviously but there is so much work we can show and it's all great so maybe elisa if you if you want to start and like tell us what you do today uh, so what is your position at netspeak games and what what you do and whatever just yeah tell us everything okay i'm gonna hide myself and just listen oh yeah Uh, I started to work uh, in the team of NetSpeak Game as a concept artist from February, but uh, I actually started to collaborating with them as a freelancer uh, at, at the end of uh, the 2020. I <laughs> talking about uh, networking. Uh, when I ar first arrived uh, in England, I was trying to understand how the video game industry wo uh, works here, how to, you know, create a, a good CV, a portfolio, a presentation. So I contacted on uh, LinkedIn uh, this uh, this person. Um, she, I, I don't know that if LinkedIn offered this function uh, today as well, but uh, <laughs> three years ago, you could contact people who were uh, who, who, who were eager to share their experience uh, with, uh, with younger people that wanted to join the industry. So uh, LinkedIn put us in contact and I asked there so for some advices. And uh, for, uh, from that day, we remained in contact until, uh, until the past year that, uh, when she said, ah, you know, this, um, uh, this, uh, this new startup I am uh, working in uh, is um, looking for a new artist. Uh, do you want to give it a try and send the portfolio and I was uh, I was actually looking for a new job in that moment so I contacted uh, I contacted the CEO and uh, uh, we started collaborating uh, on a short-term project and then I was hired uh, in uh, in February for the for the main game for the for for, for the for the game of the <laughs> what's <laughs> what's exactly the name when uh, the flag flag game flag yeah I think yes <laughs> And uh, the, the name is Sunshine Days, and it was exactly what I was uh, looking for because uh, I was looking for a team that is uh, uh, kind of new, where you can start uh, uh, knowing each other, but it's still expanding. So, for example, when I joined, uh, we were uh, like uh, 17, and now we are almost 30 and uh, growing, <laughs> still growing. Wow. And uh, this this way, you can, uh, I mean. You can know your colleagues uh, and uh, being friend and not just uh, having having friends in your team, but not knowing every uh, everyone else uh, in the company is, uh, is is really amazing. And uh, you can share ideas. And uh, I mean, it was and and the game the game is perfect for me. <laughs> it's like uh, I I like cute bright things and uh, Sunshine Days is uh, Sunshine Days aesthetic is uh, exactly like that. So. I mean, I felt like I, I won the lottery, <laughs> and uh, no, yeah, everyone there is uh, a fantastic person, uh, fantastic creatives. So is uh, there is so much energy, so much, uh, so much enthusiasm. Um, it, it's a bless. It's a bless working there. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> well, I'm so uh, happy to hear this. Yeah. So this is like are like the perks of working in a small environment rather than a big company that maybe you also get to do different things and you're not stuck with your role and maybe doing always same things. Is that true? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I can't talk for every big or small company, of course, uh, but uh, in uh, this role, I am a concept artist, but sometimes I can, I can uh, I, I can vary my 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 experience and for example working on uh, uh, for 2d and UI I just uh, I'm just uh, learning something new right now and uh, yes you can I, I I talk with my uh, with my lead artist and uh, we decided that 
I, I I should explore some 3D in the next in the, in the next months, and uh, that's an interesting challenge challenge as well. So yeah, you can uh, you can try different things and not just stay in uh, your field of expertise uh, for forever. <laughs> So yeah, th this is amazing. It looks like you're really happy about your experience right now. But yes. if you we go really back back in the past, um, how much? In the do you, how long? You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. How, how long do you want? So um, how were you like when you were a teenager? Um, how did you discover your passion for design for art? Did you like always know you? were going to be an artist or you had maybe different passions? How was growing up? Um, I always uh, had a passion for drawing since I was uh, very young. I don't remember the, the, the first drawing that I did, but I remember the first drawing my mom did for me. And somehow it was like um, numbers with faces that were playing together and that remained in my mind and I was uh, I was captured from the <laughs> from that moment on, uh, but I didn't want to be an artist, uh, uh, not for not for work at least until I was uh, 18. I wanted to be a veterinarian actually, um, probably because I had I hadn't very clear um, what kind of job uh, I could find uh, around me. I I didn't. I wasn't thinking about uh, going outside uh, outside Italy or outside Rome at the time. Uh, but then again, at, at the end of my high school, um, a science teacher offered me, the, offered me <laughs> came to me and said, oh, you know, you're always drawing. There is this school uh, in Rome that maybe could be a, of interest for you. And uh, it was an illustration academy. So I came back to 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 my to my house that day, and I was like, "Mom, you know that I wanted to be a veterinarian." Yes, okay, forget it. <laughs> I, I want to go here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it was a bit hard uh, at the beginning because uh, my parents were not exactly <laughs> convinced, but my mom, yes. Uh, my dad was a bit. You know, worried like every parents can be when uh, yeah. when uh, when it's, uh, their children uh, like uh, I'm I'll be an artist. Or what are you, what, what are you going to be? Sorry, <laughs> and uh, but no. But the, uh, in the end, uh, I started uh, the illustration school, and um, for uh, for some years, I worked as a children illustrator for picture books, and uh, in uh, it was 2013, I think I uh, I was. Uh, I attended, or 2014, I don't remember exactly the, the year, but I attended one of the very first workshop organized by ID Academy. And uh, I started following them because uh, Isabella was a friend, so uh, I, 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 I kept in contact. And uh, when uh, they started talking about, uh, uh, I mean, ID Academy, how we know it today, I was like captured. I wanted to improve because I felt stuck at the time. Uh, I, I wasn't good at perspective. I wasn't good uh, with backgrounds and uh, environments. Uh, and anatomy as well had a long way to, <laughs> to, to go in front of me. So uh, I wanted to be better and uh, I decided to, to attend the master. Wasn't, it wasn't an easy decision because I was, uh, I, I was working, so I had to to school and work at the same time, but I think that was one of the best decisions that I took. So it was master in this dev. How, how was it back then? It was like now, so we have master level one, master level two. I know oh, it like... was like one year with both of them. <laughs> oh, nice. So, so it was like, very intense. <laughs> Yeah, we now complain that it's really intensive year one. I, I can't imagine how that was for you. <laughs> um, there were some days that I finished working and doing my homework at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but I mean, when you really want to do something, I think that you find the energy. Maybe for two years I would I would have died, but for one year you can find the energy. <laughs> Okay, now this is really great. And I also see myself like doing university and art school at the same time. Yeah, I, I think many of us share this, this past. We also share parents who are not really supportive, maybe at first. I think uh, just worried sometimes, 
or sometimes not supportive. It, it can happen, I, I guess. Yeah, it's not their fault. Um, we have really a different culture in Italy. Yeah. I, it's really different. It's hard to explain to someone who lives outside. Did you like find when, when you moved uh, abroad that people um, were like more open um, knowing that you are an artist rather than here, like taking you more seriously? <laughs> Ah, uh, you mean like uh, in a work, working contest? Uh, contest? Um, yeah, also with friends, maybe. They're like, oh, I mean, artist, is, that is a job, a true job. <laughs> uh, or maybe you didn't see maybe, the difference. You know, um, my, my friends are, uh, did, did never uh, took my job light, lightly. I mean, uh, they were um they were aware that, of, of the fact that as a um, freelance illustrator i wasn't uh earning much uh but i mean it's common struggle for mo mo many jobs so they i yeah. mean it, it wasn't ever a real issue maybe my parents were really worried <laughs> yes that, that that was uh, that that was something but um i i have to say that most um it wasn't much something that happened with my friends. It was more something that could sometimes happen with the uh, people who presented the project. And uh, okay. I see that outside Italy sometimes uh, happens, but almost never. I mean, uh, people who offers you a job uh, presume that you are a professional and treat you with respect. That's basically, it. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is great. I really hope in the future we will have many, many studios for animation and also games in Italy. I, I think something is changing right now with all these students in art and this is really great. So you did the academy and you had the illustration school before and then what happened? So after uh, the academy. Me and, me and my husband wanted to, to live abroad. Uh, especially okay. we were uh, very fond of England. We we tried to come here any any time we ca we could. We we had our honeymoon in uh, in the UK, so yes, we were looking for a job here, and uh, we found something uh, like for first, uh, and uh, we move uh, one year. We moved here one year later, uh, but for a um, couple of years, uh, I was continuing working as a freelance illustrator because uh, as I said I was a bit confused uh, about many things for example uh, you know you learn so much in school but then uh, when uh, you start looking for a job you're always a bit confused by something every everyone has <laughs> his own but for example I I was trying to uh, apply for environment artist position uh, in games uh, thinking there was the same thing about uh, being a background artist in animation and is not the same because you, an environment artist is basically a 3D artist to build environments. So yes, it's a concept artist, but it, it was a completely different position from what I was looking for. And uh, so I, I I think that I spent m uh, many, many months like learning uh, during interviews and um, and, and and then uh, starting networking because uh, as I said I started asking for advices so I I begin uh, I began um, going I mean there are so many uh, meetups uh, organized here in uh, pubs after work where you can uh, uh, know any, uh, other people who are working in the industry uh, listening to their stories making new friends so it take it took me a while. <laughs> to understand proper, pro properly, not just things that I didn't know, but which direction I wanted to follow. I was a bit um, unsure. I mean, I mean, I wanted to be a concept artist, but maybe it was just because it was the only thing that I knew about. Uh, so I was exploring in different directions. And um, then I found a position uh, at, at Annecy, uh, at Annecy um, at Jam Media as a visual developer and uh, production artist 
and I, <laughs> when I was hired, <laughs> I didn't know, uh, like at all, uh, what, what I was going to be as a production artist because I didn't know what a production artist was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, you remember, I also asked you when you first told me you were working as a production artist and I was like, what is that? <laughs> 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 what is that? <laughs> I, I just guessed that I would have uh, learned on the on the on the field, <laughs> let's say, and uh, yes, basically we were the part of the art team that create uh, the, the 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 art, the design, the, the final pieces that that, that then you use uh, in uh, in the animation in the in the TV series. So we were creating the background or the coloring. Uh, Coloring designs and things like this, but but uh, since there was some room for exploring uh, other things, my uh, my director put me to work on uh, visual development as well, and uh, that was uh, rad because I got I got to explore something new and to do what I wanted to do. So it was a very nice experience. This is so great, and you also have a variety of styles, which I could see in your works, and also everyone looking now can see. And I think it really helped you maybe in this dev. Did they appreciate this capability of having different styles, of being like really precise sometimes or really illustrative in other moments? Can be a weapon and can be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know when you present your portfolio uh, it's it's useful to have a consistent portfolio and uh, showing that you can uh, following one direction but yes it's useful that you can uh, change uh, and adapt uh, to different styles but if your portfolio is crazy it's totally crazy like mine especially <laughs> some years ago but it, it can do with uh, more refining, <laughs> I have to say, uh, even uh, even now. Um, people who have uh, to uh, to look at your portfolio to decide if uh, you are the right fit for the position sometimes don't have the time to look at all of the pages, uh, why all these things are so different. Uh, she could work well in this direction, but is this a casual piece in the portfolio? Uh, <laughs> that she did maybe 10 years ago, or maybe she can be consistent if I ask to work in this particular style. So if I if I were to apply to apply right now, uh, I would uh, recreate my portfolio from scratch because I saw uh, this particularly this this last month because I was put uh, in um, uh, into the hiring process uh, to to look at the new portfolio of uh, people who were applying for 2D and a UI artist and I can and I saw and I had the, the, the opportunity to see uh, how is it for the people wow. uh, from the other side and uh, basically it's frantic because uh, I don't know I, I think that in a, a bigger company and this is just something that I think but I'm, I have no proof of this Maybe there are people dedicated to this that um, can uh, spend all of their time looking at the cover letter, looking at the portfolios, maybe uh, spending an entire day in working at everything. But for example, uh, something that happened uh, when hired me at, uh, hired me at John Media, something that is happening now is that someone in the art team or may, more than someone so actually, uh, are looking at the at the portfolios, but in the meantime, they have to do their own job uh, in the same hours. So what, what wow. is happening is, is that basically you you don't want to leave anyone left. You want to give a, a possibility to everyone to at least uh, see their their um, their portfolios. Uh, but that means that uh, you can't spend like one hour for each portfolio or for re uh, reading like five pages of cover, of cover letter. So uh, you first thing you do is opening the portfolio to understand if the uh, the art uh, is matching is uh, is matching the the kind of uh, uh, position you are they, they applied to. Uh, when you decide you have, you have a document, you don't 
uh, you don't put anyone like in the bin, but of course you put uh, higher uh, people that are more fit for the role and then uh, like uh, people who have just tried, for example, I, re I received some uh, uh, comic book pages in, in black and white for a UI position and I mean, they were very nice comic book, book pages, but it wasn't it was impossible to explore that kind of portfolio and the possibility that that person could adapt for the role because it was a role that was starting immediately. So that person this time couldn't couldn't be hired, but uh, maybe maybe another time. And that uh, teach me as well that you shouldn't be afraid of apply again because sometimes one apply to a company and don't get an answer and uh, maybe he thinks, ah, uh, you know, uh, now they hate me, they hate my portfolio, <laughs> they don't want to um, hear from me again, ever again, but it's not like that, it's just that this time maybe it wasn't the right fit, but you can apply again and uh, it could be next time, it depends from the position. And uh, also the cover letters are useful if there is um, a second uh, a second look, for example, if you if you end up in there, okay, this person is, it could be a right fit for the job. At the, uh, in that moment, uh, you can uh, take back the cover letter, the CV, take a good look at, uh, I mean, their disposition, their interest, uh, the everything that is uh, related to the person. But when you are doing the very first um, um, selection, what 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 you are uh, really looking for in the in the CV and in uh, in the cover letter are data that <laughs> that can tell me that for example you are uh, expert in this software that we need so uh, okay okay writing about yourself okay writing about your motivation but be sure that I can find very quickly the data or I could they, they could be lost and I just say oh, okay. Uh, he didn't write ever anything about this, uh, his, his knowledge about, for example, a real engine. And uh, so be passionate is important, uh, create, uh, showing different things is important, but always being, being sure that uh, your portfolio is, uh, I mean, is in line with the, um, the position offered, not because the, the company is uh, like, ah, I want you I want you to adapt to me. It's just that uh, you have more chances because the, the time is not much. I, oh I think God. I lost myself. But. <laughs> no, 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 this is really precious. I didn't know you were also in the hiring process right now and it really gives you an insight. Yeah, no, this is great. So let's do like some statistics. How, maybe how long do you look at one portfolio before like just jumping to the next one? So how many um, pages, how many pieces? Consider that I could spend not more than one hour, one hour and a half a day. And uh, sometimes it, it were the, the, we, we received like not many new candidatures. So if I had six new uh, people, maybe I could spend some more time, but sometimes it was uh, 21 new more in the morning and then I had to rush. <laughs> so it really depends from uh, how many people are applying every day. That's, yeah, just a matter of luck for people applying. <laughs> you have to choose the right day. This also, yeah, goes well with like maybe sending the portfolio more than once because it can get lost maybe sometimes. Uh, Maybe for bigger companies. Also. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard of a few friends of mine that first time they applied, nothing like silence. Second time, nothing had changed. Maybe they just put a few new pieces in the portfolio, but nothing like great, greatly different. But next time, maybe they got a test or they got the position, they got the job. It was just maybe the right moment. I don't know. It's really yeah. great. So I think everyone in the call wants to hear maybe some tips, uh, more tips on portfolio since we are like students, recently gradu graduated students looking for a job, uh, most of us. So if you have anything else you can share, you, you said so much and it was really precious. Maybe then we can like leave some room for questions if 
someone yes. wants, maybe uh, at the end of the call, yeah. So, uh, you you mean general general advices? It it really depends because, for example, if you're looking for a job in games, is different from I mean not that different, but kind of different from animation and uh, from uh, I had this experience, uh, a really brief experience in uh, architectural visualization that is like totally different as well, and um, very hard if you are not I mean. It was an amazing experience, but I, I understood that it wasn't the right path for me. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's different, it's just different. Uh, I think that uh, some people who particularly lo love to work on uh, realistic concept uh, with photo bashing, uh, uh, they could uh, they could really uh, love to work in, a, in architectural visualization. I didn't even think that it was a possibility for a concept artist and uh, yet there is a uh, there is room for concept artists there as well this is new for me as well i didn't know that yeah, there is so much to explore <laughs> after school. usually usually in uh, architectural visualization from what i understood is uh, um, like 99 percent of the people are uh, 3d artists and uh, they realize their concept as well but if you are a concept artist who are good in using 3d and uh, he was keen to work uh, in realistic. I think uh, it should be a thing to consider. It's, uh, it's fascinating because you are not an architect. You are just uh, creating a vision. Like how could it be this space? How could it be um, this garden? How could this be this, uh, this street? So there is uh, much room for creativity there. Oh yeah, and no worries for technical issues. Yes, exactly. So someone else will hate you later, but <laughs> <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah. Also, like maybe the three D modeler after you you do the design for a, a character, yeah, you went all creative, and then he will hate you or she will hate you because of the details and stuff. But yeah, that's part of that the job. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> Technically, our job as a concept artist is also to know the pip pipeline and uh, the hardship that people after us. Uh, needs to <laughs> needs to confront so we should be able to prevent at least in part uh, uh, issues and uh, create designs that i don't say that you have to create a ball okay this is this, this is easy go with this but um something that is not impossible to build you know having a for example uh an idea of how your concept will be in a three-dimensional space so that uh, when uh, for example you design a character uh, uh, frontal is uh, is working but how it will be uh, if you see him from a side or from uh, from behind it would be consistent like your 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 design front side and uh, back or a three quarter would be would be possible to be realized in um, in 3D and for example, you put something that could be nice as a 2D design, but it, it, it is doable in 3D. So, uh, I mean, it's for the 3D artist to realize it, but it's also for uh, for us to prevent uh, problem issues. Yes, be kind to the next one in the pipeline, <laughs> always. <laughs> yes, also because uh, if you create problem, uh, it's time consuming and time is money. So, <laughs> this is really great to see see everything like in the perspective of an artist already working for a studio and seeing all these dynamics between people. And yeah, also about the life in the studio and sadly the pandemic. Did the pandemic change your work life much or not? Well, uh, something that is... Uh... I... I really enjoyed working at Brown and uh, we uh, finished the working day and maybe we're having dinner to uh, together or maybe to a pub or I mean doing some activities together, having lunch, uh, having a chat. Uh, of course, uh, uh, online is uh, much mu much more difficult. We have uh, uh, some uh, uh, some ideas in place uh, for in uh, in my workplace to. Uh, to maintain contact with our colleagues, for example, we have uh, on the Slack. I don't know if you know Slack. Is a chat system similar? To oh yeah, yeah. 
um, Discord, and uh, we have there a bot, <laughs> and it's called Danat. And um, every each week, every week you get paired with one of your colleagues, and you have uh, 30 minutes to chat uh, uh, during working hour. But it's like a coffee break. You uh, you can chat about your life and whatever you want. It's just to make friends, basically, and uh, that's really nice. Yes, this is really nice that you can yeah keep in touch with people. So you're like working at home since the pandemic started and. You yes. didn't go back to the studio, yeah. We have a studio, but no one is going there at the moment. Uh, we are all and also half of the studio is based outside England. So it's, oh. uh, it's it would be kind of normal to use a uh, uh, Google Meet call uh, also uh, after the pandemic ends, hopefully soon, <laughs> because uh, yeah. for some of us it's uh, like the only way to communicate. Yeah, I get that. And maybe do you think that the pandemic also can change um, the artistic world? The way studios recruit also there is more possibility for working from abroad, maybe. And there is also like more a need for artistic people like more space, more jobs? I, I think so, yes. Maybe at the very beginning of 2020, people were still a, a, a bit uh, uh, not enthusiastic <laughs> about changing their ways. But uh, uh, I believe that many of them realized that uh, it's not that much uh, worse uh, having people working from home. And uh, for example, I had um, before joining the next week, I had a, um, not a, not a meeting, an interview uh, with an animation company in uh, in the USA, and they they usually hire hired in the past only people who could who lived around the studio, but uh, the hiring manager was explaining me that uh, they were changing this and they were now open to, for example, hiring people from Europe. Uh, so yes, I think that. I can see the same on our station. In the beginning, many of the job posts were like, OK, but you have to be on site. So yeah. if you, you have to move here. But now there are many positions that are like uh, for remote remote position, even if they are full time. So I think this is uh, like something that is started and is good for us. Yeah, lots of opportunities and who knows, maybe it will be like this also in the future. We will be able to work maybe for Pixar from Rome. <laughs> yeah, everyone like hopes that even if life in the studio can be interesting and it's also a great experience. And yes, I, 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 I love it. I, I have to say that I had just just a couple, uh, but um, Maybe it's because I came from a very long freelance experience where I all, where, where I was always working at home by myself, but I really enjoyed to work with other people and uh, having the opportunity to work on a project together. And, you know, it's not just the teamwork. I mean, you can have teamwork uh, working by remote as well, but is um, sharing ideas is faster when you are all around. Yeah. Uh, a picture, for example, and uh, with your teammates, your director, you you, you can uh, look at that. You, you can create ideas uh, immediately and share it. In, like it's a matter of seconds. It's like it's a different energy. It's not that now is bad, but I I like working in studio. Yeah, I can like only imagine how the brainstorming would go fast with having all the colleagues around and sharing ideas. Um, so also I have a more like personal question. Um, do you have any like role model as an artist who really inspired you? Do you have uh, maybe a movie, a book who really like inspire you and you go back to that to to get ideas and to get motivation? Well, <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> I think my first, uh, the first pers person who 
he inspired me uh, was uh, Chris Riddle. When I was an illustrator, I really like his black and white work. I think he's very expressive and uh, I tried to be like him when I, when I was in, uh, in illustration school. But yet again, you understand that you, you shouldn't be like another artist, but he can inspire you. Um, then I have like uh, folders and folders and folders <laughs> of uh, like old masters uh, working in my in my computer that I admire. I like uh, Joaquin Sorolla or Maxfield Parrish. I like Van Gogh, and uh, these three are probably my uh, my my favorites. Uh, movies uh, there are a lot, and I mean uh, <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, I think that my interest is. Uh, easily captured <laughs> by new things. <laughs> I'm like, you know, dogs when they uh, see squirrels, like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> something like this. Um, yeah, I, I think that is uh, my, ma my main source uh, of uh, inspiration. Then there are like million of, uh, <laughs> maybe not million, but hundreds of uh, contemporary or uh, artists and uh, one of my favorite uh, as a, for for his use of uh, colors uh, is uh, Nathan Fox. Yeah, uh, I really He's like. He's amazing. Yes. Amazing concepts, amazing environments. You can really feel the feelings. <laughs> the yeah, as well. Yeah. And also, I was thinking before when you were talking about production design at. Ellen Min Jue Chen, and I hope I said her name uh, correctly, that she did like the production design for Raya. And now I get a little bit uh, what that job is, like creating models and maybe surfaces, buildings, everything that is needed for a production, basically. So I, yeah, you, it's like that. So I understood it a little bit. <laughs> Mysterious job. <laughs> and I, yeah, we're looking at all your beautiful stuff. I also wanted to ask you, where can people follow you? Maybe Instagram, uh, ArtStation. I can like put a few links in the chat after the call. I have uh, ArtStation, Twitter and Instagram. I think the one that usually I follow a bit more lately is uh, Twitter because uh, I mean, it's nice to chat with people there, but it's not invasive in your life like Facebook. <laughs> I, uh, I can, I kind of like Instagram when I have free time, but I mean, you could, you could have my Instagram account and not having a single update for months and then like 20 new things <laughs> in one day. I'm not very good at keeping my social uh, <laughs> updated, like uh, in a very I mean, professional way and just, uh, oh, okay, yeah. and now I have these updates, <laughs> everything on. Uh, probably uh, if, if you want to take a look at my, uh, my artwork is better at station than Instagram, I think. Yeah, you, you have all this beautiful stuff. I, I feel you with not being consistent on socials. It's, yeah, I think a problem everyone shares a little bit. But there are some artists, they are amazing, like one post every day. I don't know how they do that. Maybe they don't sleep at all. No, I think it's just uh, a matter of organization. If you want to be uh, uh, like uh, the owner of your of yourself, you can uh, work in uh, some days preparing the, the job for next week. So you know that this day one, uh, one thing will go out in the, on, on the Instagram, but you prepare like one week, two weeks in advance. So you, you should organize it like it's a job. Yeah. Job. Social media skills that can really yeah. help. Oh, this... I don't have them. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me <laughs> think of another question, but I also wanted to ask everyone in the call if they want to send some questions in the chat, maybe, so that we can read them later. Um, yeah, I was thinking, did it happen to hire someone for a job uh, thanks to maybe Instagram or just ArtStation, maybe you were like having a break and you found this amazing artist and then you thought, okay, maybe we can ask uh, them if they, if they want to join, if they're looking for a job or 
it always happens with portfolios that are sent to the studio. So, uh, uh, it's just not happened with portfolios. I'm not, uh, uh, I don't know, because as I said, it's uh, my first yeah, it's, time yeah. <laughs> on a, the hiring, in the hiring process, but I knew because I heard other people uh, talking that maybe sometimes uh, uh, some portfolios were um, seen by, by the hire people who were in charge of hiring directly on LinkedIn, for example. They were just uh, looking for people that ma were matching the position on LinkedIn and even uh, if they were like uh, inexperienced junior artists, they were like having an interesting LinkedIn page. Well, uh, well done with every uh, every data was in place, so they were contacted. Yeah, this is a nice advice. Always be tidy with social pages to help recruiters. <laughs> well, it's important also that you keep updated your uh, uh, your skills, uh, not just. I mean, if if you are an artist. Uh, uh, it's good to know that you can use like uh, 300 uh, software for painting, but if, if you have, for example, this, the, the skill to use Illustrator or even just a, a bit, uh, you should put it because uh, maybe it could be something more or maybe you are not using Illustrator, but you know how to, use, uh, how to put your art in Unity or how to put your art in a real engine. Maybe you are not developing the game, for example, because it's not something that it would be asked to you, but maybe you are able to just upload your art in uh, the proper place uh, in the in the software. So if you know how to do it, uh, write it down because it's a very useful skill. Yeah, this is also something to keep in mind. Maybe also, I don't know, different experiences can help to learn the job. Maybe you did something totally off, which is not uh, even art related, but maybe sometimes it can help. <laughs> sometimes it depends. For example, uh, I. It didn't happen to me this time, but for, uh, I was talking with a person um, uh, during a mentoring. I did a mentoring experience as a mentee, so I was the one learning and I was followed by a person. And uh, it, it, every month uh, we, before the pandemic, <laughs> we gathered all together, mentors and mentee, and we were sharing uh, experience and uh, like questions. And uh, we, we talked about uh, hi the hiring process as well. And uh, one person from the voice, one voice actress uh, was uh, um, uh, telling us that once one uh, CV particularly uh, captured her attention because the person wasn't just uh, like a right fit for the position, but also an interesting one. I think that she was a, an archer and uh, had uh, many wow. different interesting um, hobbies. So she wanted to chat with her because I mean, she seems not just a, um, a a good worker, but also an interesting, nice person with uh, with a lot of uh, things that can share with other people. And, uh, a nice person to having around. So yeah, yeah. sometimes uh, other life experience can be can be a help. Uh, this is like really amazing, amazing tips. I can see many questions <laughs> right now. I don't know if you can also see the chat or maybe I can just read them to you. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so many questions. You, you said many interesting things. <laughs> okay, I start uh, answering to the first and if you want to read the next, so uh, we will be prepared after. Um, so as yeah, a junior yeah. artist, uh, I think is, there is not something that is best, like being a generalist or being a, a specialist, but it could be easier to find a job if you have a focused portfolio. So, for example, if you have the soul of a generalist like me <laughs> and you do like 100 different things, but you are applying to uh, for, for looking for a job, uh, first uh, try to isolate your what you like the most. I, I know that it's not easy because for one person who has like many interests, you think like, but I like everything. But there is always something that maybe you like the most. Maybe you like bright colors or dark tones. You like uh, uh, sweet, uh, sweet world full of sweets and uh, uh, rainbows, or maybe you like uh, 
I don't, I don't know, skulls or ogres, uh, fantasy or sci-fi, you should have something that really attracts you. So try to isolate those pieces and uh, to ask to yourself, I, have I enough pieces for this? Uh, could I find a job uh, in, the, uh, in this field? Uh, there is, and if there aren't, you could just try to uh, have enough pieces to have a small portfolio, but consistent. For example, if you don't, if you are a sci-fi lover, but you know, there are not sci-fi positions open right now. There are only, uh, I don't know, fantasy, for example. Do you have fantasy pieces? Do you have something that could go in that universe? Because even if it's not exactly a warrior or a mage but something that for example could be consistent with the art style uh, of the company something that could uh, for example you don't have a mage but maybe your astronaut is painted in the exact way uh, blizzard cards are painted so even if it's not exactly a warrior it could be having some pieces uh, painted in the style could be a good start uh, try to find in uh, your portfolio in your works uh, something that is uh, matching with the company you are applying, applying to and not to put like uh, and if you are not like super 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 convinced of uh, your pieces not put it in the portfolio is better having not many pieces than having uh, too many that are all different because as i was saying before a person that open your portfolio i have a very limited time and uh, if I say, for example, a black and white page of comic, uh, very uh, curated, rendered house uh, in uh, uh, isometric view. And then again, I have two backgrounds in 2D uh, that were realized thinking to cartoon saloon style, for example. I don't really know who you are. And I'm not sure that when I have so uh, so little time I can hire you. So, for example, if you have just two backgrounds in a cartoon saloon style, <laughs> now I'll go with this analogy, and uh, there is an open position uh, in cartoon saloon, try to scrap everything that is really so far from their style, keep those two backgrounds, see if you have something else that maybe is not in their style, but is at least 2D, is at least something about backgrounds and non-isometric view of, of houses. Like, try to isolate pieces that could be useful for them to judge you, to judge if you are the good fit for the position. Because uh, being generally gen generalist uh, requires for you to build a portfolio that is easy to understand in uh, not, not many minutes in this position. Like, you should give... Uh, uh, maybe create a story or a consistent idea from uh, of developing something from uh, scratch to to the end. I I don't know. It, it requires a lot of work. Being creating a good uh, generalist portfolio, in my opinion, uh, is, especially if the uh, if you are not applying uh, for a speculative application, but for a, a precise precise uh, job application with a specific fit. So try to be. The, the most, uh, uh, the most, like, ah, ah, my English is broken. <laughs> uh, try to uh, to stick the most to the to what what they want to see, and then maybe you can have a separate website and you say, okay, this is my portfolio for you. This is what I want to do. I am uh, interested in uh, doing this. But I'm also have experience, you know, in other things. I'm I can be versatile and apply to uh, my style to other art styles. So if you want to check on other works that I did, you can go to this link, and, and that link goes in a different page, or, or at, at least is not your main portfolio. But try to send something that is that, that is sticking to the the job application if you can, because uh, it gave you more chances. I mean, it's not a rule. Sometimes. Uh, people are just trying to see if they can find an interesting new artist. And uh, once in a job fair, I was told this thing that I was like, why? <laughs> uh, there was this art director uh, I was uh, talking with, uh, and um, I was asking, but you know, uh, sometimes I open uh, uh, 
job posts and there are so many skills required skills required so many uh, things uh, that i mean i am a junior artist how can i have all this experience with all these softwares all these uh, all these requirements and it was like ah you know sometimes we just uh, <laughs> need a couple of these skills in the page but then we wrote everything like we uh, are aiming for a superstar because you never know maybe you find this person <laughs> <But> like, ah. <laughs> oh my god this is great <laughs> so uh, for example if the position is for a concept artist or a 2d artist and you think your style is uh, is the good fit for the company but you are scared because uh, they are asking like the moon in the job post. Maybe give it a try because uh, even if you don't have uh, all of the knowledge of all of the software listed in the job post, maybe maybe they could hire you uh, and uh, like teaching you if you are a junior artist uh, because uh, especially big companies have uh, not just one artist uh, for the position they they have maybe the junior artist the the lead artist uh, our director and, and so on so uh, maybe they if you are a very good a very good artist for them uh, if you have a style that they are looking for and uh, you seems like uh, a person that they, they would like to having around they could say okay maybe this person doesn't know about this software but we could uh, we could easily teach uh, teach about it uh, to her or to him sorry <laughs> i was going to <laughs> with this uh, phantomatic female person in my hand in my head um, to them uh, we can teach to them uh, in like one or two weeks or one month or the first month and uh, it they cover all of the other requirements so why not you you should try even if uh, maybe there are some requirements that are scaring you uh, 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 as long as the as the position is uh, as your application is consistent with the position uh, you should have at least a chance this is great thank, thank you for this answer and also julia asks many questions but really interesting questions she's saying that uh, she's starting to send cover letters on LinkedIn and um, she is receiving few responses, uh, fewer than maybe she expected. And so she's asking, how many recruiters have you contacted before finding your job? So how many silences? <laughs> so, Julia, I feel you. I feel you so much. <laughs> oh, uh, unfortunately, is uh, like a very common thing because uh, uh, I don't know, for example, which studio you contacted, but uh, the bigger is the studio and for the bigger, I mean, uh, like <laughs> more than 15 people in the team, uh, the more um, can, uh, application you receive, uh, the, the studio receives. So there is no time. There is no time to answer to all of them. You just select the people you, you, that you want to interview and uh, you contact them. So even if you're, for example, it doesn't mean that your portfolio is crap because it's not good. Maybe it was it was good. It, it was in the good uh, folder, but maybe there were like uh, 20 awesome, <laughs> awesome fit yeah. and they just didn't uh, arrive to your uh, to, 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 to your uh, application. And it, uh, it's not something that should stop you because uh, maybe this month was like this and maybe next month you are the best uh, can uh, candidate. So uh, it happens like to everyone uh, to stay like four months without any answer. And maybe five months later you receive, thank you for applying to our position, but you were a fantastic uh, candidate, but no, nope, thank you. <laughs> and you feel like super depressed. And uh, I felt super depressed for months, but you shouldn't because uh, is not you. Uh, it depends from the positions, but for example, there are so few places available for concept artists sometimes, and uh, or sometimes like a new studio arises and they want like one million of artists, like happened for uh, it was Boulder Media that some years ago like opened uh, their <laughs> their, their, their doors for a lot of new artists, and it really depends from the moment. It, it can happen that like for a year. Uh, there are few jobs uh, position uh, open and uh, it's not anyone false it's not it doesn't mean that you're not a, a great artist it just doesn't mean that you have to to look to look more around <laughs> 
So she also asks if you ever sent emails to Italian editors, maybe when you were working as an illustrator. Yeah. Um, so it happened. How did it go? Ah. <laughs> so, uh, the beginning I used to send not just emails, but like a full project. I, I it, it, it's kind of sweet. I was sending like book uh, book projects like with a small prototype uh, built uh, with the card and cardboard and printed and everything by hand and I was sending these things around the people probably were, were freaking out because they were like oh my god now I will lose this thing and uh, she will hate me forever so they were <laughs> they were sending me back the prototype with many thanks but no good thank you uh, and <laughs> now um, I mean, it's not very different from contacting a person, a uh, publisher from uh, another country. I mean, it's basically the same. Maybe sometimes something that I personally don't like, but I know people who like it. So it's a personal preference. Uh, Italian people tends to be too much friendly, even if I don't know you. I mean, it's OK if you want to say ciao and uh, come stai and <laughs> things like this, but I don't like to start a new uh, job relationship uh, considering uh, a new person like a member of my family because uh, sometimes then um, I mean it's easy to end up in misunderstandings later so I prefer to start uh, in a professional way with contract uh, and uh, a respectful exchange of emails and then at the end of the relationships we can all be friends <laughs> but I prefer to start you know more, uh, uh, more professional uh, <laughs> way of uh, being. Oh, sorry, as I said, my English is broken. No, no, yeah. As Sharon says, it puts you in a weird position. Are you a friend? Are you a colleague? Or what? What are you? <laughs> then, after a while, but yeah, it's always better to be professional all the time, and then you can also become friends with people, which is good because. When you become friends, you actually became friends. You had are, we have a relationship with this person. You know how this person is, and uh, if you find uh, working with uh, with them uh, like uh, pleasant and uh, create and uh, it boosts your creativity, or maybe it destroys your creativity because not each person is made for working with another person. You yeah. should be able to, I mean, find a way to make things work. But of course. Some people will become your friends and some people will become just work contacts. Not sure. Yeah, and also another question from Julia. She she says, how how did you find next new jobs when the previous one finished? Ha, ah, this is the hard part. <laughs> it, it, it depends. I have to say that as illustrator it was easier because uh, uh, you have your portfolio, you have your style, you send uh, direct, uh, almost always directly to the art director, your uh, portfolio, your ideas, and maybe they have a project and they contact back you. So uh, if you uh, if you have experience and uh, you, are, you, sh you shouldn't have too much problems in finding a new job. I mean, if you are at the beginning of your career, maybe there are some things that you have to work on. So for example, like, it required me sometimes I went, after I went out from illustration school to find my first job in publishing, but after that it was kind of easy to jump to the next. Uh, maybe not all, the, not all of the jobs were like big jobs that pays you well, so, especially in the beginning it was more like gaining experience and uh, understanding what I want to do and maybe trying different things, but I mean it gets better, it gets better, uh, especially especially if you have an, uh, an agency, I think, because uh, most of the bigger publishing houses uh, works directly with agents and uh, it's rare for them to work directly with the freelancer. It's not that it doesn't happen at all, but most of them working with agencies. So if you have an agency and you work, uh, it's more likely that you can work with a big publisher and, and get a big gig, uh, well-paid book uh, to work on. While for uh, uh, my job as a concept artist, uh, uh, it wasn't super easy, but uh, it was because um, 
lot of things happened. My first job, I had to stay one year uh, um, far from my home. I was w uh, working in Dublin while my, while my husband was working in England. So at a certain point, I understood that uh, they just wanted to uh, have me and other new people for that project. But uh, then again, they would have kept working on next project for and just with the internal people. So when uh, my project finished, I just came back home, but I didn't have already started trying to find an another one. So it required me a couple of months also because I was exhausted. So <laughs> I took at least two to, to rest. <laughs> And uh, and the, the next job was in uh, the architectural visualization. Then that experience ended and the pandemic started. So I'm not a very good statistic <laughs> for understanding <laughs> how how many months you need to find a new job because uh, I was starting finding a new job exactly in the moment when the pandemic started. And everyone was locked uh, in their home and uh, companies were not yet prepared to work with uh, people from home or remote positions so, so it was a bit of a mess and it again i need i needed to wait for some months before to find a regular position but in the end it happened so yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's so nice to, to hear this but it also happened to me i sometimes i think that like the first job is the hardest one to find because then you build like a network or maybe people in studios already know you. It happened to me in comics. After the first job, I like kept getting jobs, but it's maybe harder when you jump in another field or for your first job and then everything maybe gets easier and easier in time. Yes, oh, for sure. And uh, also you gain some knowledge that even if uh, uh, in the worst of times, uh, you don't have anyone that can uh, uh, guide you or uh, helping you or uh, I mean, you you are alone in looking for a job again, but at least uh, you know more than uh, you knew before. And that is really helpful because uh, you know better how to move, how to prepare yourself uh, for uh, uh job for a job post or uh, for application uh, for an interview and that like doing the first interview or doing your 10th interview is different especially when you know what is after what there is after the interview I mean. well, this is really sweet and like mo motivational and julia says thank you and that she is not going to stop trying so we have one more inspired artist today <laughs> <laughs> which, which is great. And also one question uh, again from Damiano. He says, he asks if it's better to send emails on LinkedIn or find emails on website for recruiters or maybe just contact people on social media or... Mm, I would avoid uh, contacting people on social media uh, because, I mean, it, it depends. It depends uh, why you are contacting them. I mean, if you contact uh, a professional that you uh, admire and you want to have uh, maybe some feedback uh, and uh, you are uh, like um, respectful of their time and you understand that they can't answer you immediately because sometimes people like I had a, a very intense week uh, the, uh, this, 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 this week and I couldn't even uh, like <laughs> bring myself from one room to the other so i totally ignored my social media world and it's not that maybe people are ignoring you so if you are respectful of that and you ask uh, like kindly like you know i'm a junior artist i'm looking for a job i really admire your uh, your work could you maybe uh, give me some feedback on my portfolio or maybe give me adv an advice how to on how to write my cover letter i think that everyone or at least most of them will be very happy to help you with their times. So if you don't rush them, I think that most of the people in the industry would be very, very pleased to help some, someone else. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't advise to contact people for getting a job. I mean, on LinkedIn, if you have the website with the job post or, I mean, if you follow official channels, 
is fine. Uh, you can send th uh, through LinkedIn or you can send through the website. Uh, the almost every company website have the career like career page and you can follow those addresses and uh, even the generic email doesn't go lost. I mean, uh, there is someone who receives it and it is the right person, uh, but I wouldn't advise to say, hey, I'm looking for a job, please hire me because uh, it, it puts the other person in a weird spot. For example, I received <laughs> once a uh, request like that uh, and I was like, I'm sorry, I'm not even the right person to ask to. I mean, I, I don't have any decisional power and I don't think there are open per, um, positions right now. And I was feeling very bad because uh, it felt like uh, I wanted to dismiss this junior artist, but it wasn't like that. It was just that I couldn't, I couldn't really help them. And sometimes that didn't happen to me, but I know people that have been contact and the, the person on the other side was very insisting as uh, that could create you I mean a good uh, not a very good uh, uh, opinion <laughs> in uh, other people's eyes because uh, I mean no one wants to feel uncomfortable so be mindful and respectful of, the, of other people and uh, I mean I am sure that everyone uh, that you consider being a good professional and a good person would answer you uh, if you if you're looking for advices but don't try to find a job contacting a person that works in a studio because it it could be it could be difficult for that person yeah that makes sense and we have a really interesting question from Vincent who wants to um, to build a video games portfolio next year because he's doing the master level one, yeah, so this dev master, and he asks, what are the most important steps for this portfolio for of this dev in of this dev in video games? So maybe it says turnarounds, ability showcase of characters, and what is like the most important parts in your in your opinion? Uh, since he said to turn around, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess he wants to be a character designer. Um, no, he, he wants like to, to build um, this dev portfolio for video games. So he says, okay, so what what is a good fit for this portfolio to showcase maybe his ability? Yes, uh, I think that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he says Escar. Yeah, so you were right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think that it could uh, show a bit of the process uh, from um, starting uh, gathering ideas till uh, having the final one. So, for example, if you are creating a character, you can show the final character in the first page, uh, but then show how you arrived there. So, for example, uh, maybe a couple uh, a page where you show how you uh, impost your work, uh, uh, you have some reference, you do some sketches, uh, show some sketches and uh, why uh, well, you don't have to write everything but you for example you just take a couple of those sketches we have a strong silhouettes and uh, starting to work on them then for example uh, is your uh, character for a uh, uh, mobile game on a phone or is for a console game is really different because it's, if your character if it is for a mobile game it has to be really readable in a on a small screen so you should pay attention of having a very clear silhouettes not too many details maybe you should have bigger elements uh, as bigger elements the elements that you want to be important so for example if there is a particular prop or maybe the head of the character or it depends from the angle of the camera the camera you have to consider this uh, is a video game that is 2d uh, is, is frontal sorry or is like uh, have an isometric view because if it has an isometric view you should prioritize different elements uh, that has to be seen then uh, for example from a frontal game and uh, if you if it, if you are um, concepting for, uh, for 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 a game on uh, 
triple A game on uh, PlayStation 5. You can go crazy with details uh, as, as much as you want. And uh, I mean, your character should, uh, you, you should show the process, but also consider uh, what kind of games you are developing. Because uh, of course, if you are creating a, a super cute character for uh, on a giant screen, like uh, 4K uh, on a 4K screen, or you are creating a character for uh, you know a very old uh, uh, Android device, uh, it's not it's not the same. So uh, yes, th that is something that is important to keep in mind, like the process, but also the the final uh, the final game. What kind of game it is? Is it? And yes, just to answer to your question, uh, having a bit of uh, uh, turnaround, uh, eventually a, cu a couple of T-poses uh, can be useful. Uh, ah, and remember uh, also some, something, that there are a, a lot of things that you can uh, decide when you are creating your, uh, y your, um, your pitch, your, your pitch game, your portfolio. For example, is it a character that uh, will be animated or is it a character that will be still or uh, like uh, very partially animated because uh, uh, it's useless <laughs> to do like a full uh, exploration of uh, character um, um, expressions if the character is not moving or is like uh, a very puppety uh, character. Uh, and you should concentrate on silhouette, on contrast, color, values, how the character appear in game, how the character is seen from the camera. But if you are creating a character that is animated like in an animation movie, then you should uh, also give, uh, prepare for him a, a set of expression and of gestures. So it really depends on your pro from, uh, what your project is uh, oriented to. Wow. Wow. This is really precise. I am learning so much today. <laughs> yeah, everyone is really happy for the answers. So we have another one by Mirto. Oh, um, by the way, Elisa, um, whenever, I don't know, you're tired or want to stop, just tell us. We, we don't want to like steal your time, <laughs> all of your time tonight. And so um, Mirto asks what what happens if you need to change your style for a job? What, what is your approach? Sorry, what? I didn't... So she said she says she's oh, OK, um, that everything was clear, but she's curious. What happens if you have to change your style for a job? What is your approach? I mean, uh, it depends. Uh, you have to change your style because uh, you are looking for a new job or because uh, you are in a company and you have to adapt to a new project. Because uh, if it's the first one, first case, uh, I wouldn't advise to completely uh, go against what you feel, uh, what, what you like, not what you are comfortable in. Because even if there is something that uh, you never tried, but maybe you would love to try something that it attracts you, a, a, you and uh, you think you would love to work on maybe it could be it could be a good thing give it a shot uh, but uh, not if it's something that you are doing just because you're need you are in need of a job and uh, I say this with the mass the, the maximum <laughs> like <laughs> empathy because I sometimes consider to do it as well but uh, it, it simply doesn't work you are not happy it shows in your portfolio people people can see it so uh, it's just it's just building frustration that you could and uh, like taking time from yourself that you could use for maybe another an application another portfolio that you are want to build so I wouldn't advise in that sense to do something that you don't like to do uh, because you're looking for a new job why if you are in a company uh, yes it, you could be required to uh, adapt your style for different uh, um, projects but uh, I don't think that any good company or any good art director would put you in a, in a position where you have to be, for the, for example, the 
lead artist, so having uh, like uh, the good consi consistency uh, required for that game and uh, is not something that you are able to do. For example, in big companies, uh, uh, I was told recently uh, uh, um, in a workshop that um, it happens that there are artists that are not the lead artists, so maybe their work doesn't end uh, in game, uh, but they are concept artists and they are creating ideas. So maybe their ideas will be developed by the lead artists and then uh, adapted uh, from them uh, in the right style, uh, but it doesn't mean that they can't uh, contribute to a new game. So maybe you were on a project before that was more uh, in line with your, uh, with, with your work, uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't contribute on a new project. Uh, maybe we, you will not be the lead artist, or maybe you are the right person and you weren't the lead artist before, but you will be later. It, it depends, bro. but no company would ever put you in a position uh, wh where you can't uh, do your job or fire you because uh, they want to create a new, a new game or a new series and you are not the exactly right fit for that. I mean, no worse. Well, this is a nice insight, yeah. And I think we have one last question from Mark, who says that he um, is a VizDev student, but he has a generalist background in animation, and uh, he has a showreel, which isn't specific and might not be at the level of his work, but he asks if he should include the showreel um, maybe in his portfolio, in his website, uh, because it can be a plus in the field to show that you have some understanding of animation as well. What do you think? Um, as a general rule, I would say that if you don't feel uh, uh, super comfortable and super sh no artists ever feel super sure about this work, but I mean, at least uh, reasonably confident <laughs> with what you are showing don't put it not at least uh, in the in the job in the job application you're doing i mean you can have it uh, on uh, other websites uh, for example uh, uh, an application that i was looking at had uh, this person who have his portfolio and uh, his cover his cover letter and uh, cv with all of, the, of his address and i had a bit of, a bit more time that day so i go looking at his like LinkedIn page and Instagram and uh, all other uh, address in uh, at, the, at the end of the of the document and I I, I discovered that he can do uh, some uh, to the animation it wasn't something that he put because it wasn't related to the position and I think he did well in that sense but I could write a note uh, saying that uh, uh, you know, I saw that he also have uh, this skill, uh, this additional skill. So yes, it could be an additional skill, but don't put it in your main uh, uh, letter. Maybe put a link uh, somewhere, like for example, you have your uh, your reel, like okay, there is this link in your CV, but it's not like your main proposition. Because if you don't feel, and if you don't feel comfortable about it, you I should re revise the reel. Maybe just put the animation that you really are proud of, and uh, even if the reel is shorter, scrap the rest. This is really great. Let's see if someone else is typing. Well, yeah, everyone's happy. I wanted to put the link to your station for everyone to have a look at, at your works. There are also <laughs> horrible things from the past, don't hate me. <laughs> Everyone has something really, yeah, no, I, I, I'm i going to delete my Instagram account now <laughs> before anyone finds out. Okay, I will just wait maybe a couple minutes for maybe some more questions, but in the meantime, th thank you so much for your time. I feel so thankful. I I learned so much and I'm sure it's the same for, for everybody. Oh, another question. And the compliment, super lovely work. <laughs> Thank you so much. And oh, this is like nice question about money. <laughs> how hey. much? <laughs> yeah, how much should we charge per day for a senior artist? Uh, 
um, yeah, senior. Uh, no, I, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't uh, correcting the pronouns. I was just. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, my my English is dead. <laughs> To, so we are in, a, in the same boat. <laughs> so uh, it depends from where you're working, and uh, every country has uh, is uh, its own fees, uh, and they are related to the cost of living. For example, if you work in in England, it's different than working in uh, Switzerland or in Italy or uh, in uh, the USA, and it depends from the position because a concept artist doesn't uh, have the same uh, day, daily fee than a uh, background artist or than a uh, storyboard artist, uh, an animator, a uh, UI artist. They are all different. So it depends from your position, actually, and from where are you going to work. I know that there is an hashtag. <laughs> uh, let me find it. Um, uh, for uh, both for games and both for animation, I think, on Twitter that could give you an insight of how professional, how much professional. Uh, let me find it on. Um, me, I think it was. She she says she's uh, thinking about um, illustration. So a senior in illustration, how much? So I'm she putting should, in the. Yeah. I think that the other one was like game dev paid me. Nice. Oh, yep. Okay. So uh, basically, since it's a very vast <laughs> topic and everyone has uh, their own fees, uh, uh, you were saying that she was thinking about uh, the price per day as illustrator. Yes, I yeah, I think she That's she's even thinking about that because uh, and it's not just something related to the country, but also related to how big is the publishing house sometimes. What I would advise is uh, to even if you are uh, a very junior artist uh, to having a sense of how much you would uh, gain with a normal sal monthly salary uh, if you had uh, like normal uh, like full time paid job and then consider that uh, on that price you have to put a surplus at least at least I should say I would say 25% more because you have to pay your own uh, uh, holidays your own uh, um, health Health days. <laughs> I don't remember when you're sick. Basically, yeah. uh, sick leaves and uh, everything else. Uh, all, all of the expenses are on you. You have to pay for your uh, hardware, the computer, and so you have to pay more. You have to be paid more than a person who is uh, who has a full time uh, full time job. So yeah, at least twenty five, even more. It depends from where you live. Uh, you should uh, you should uh, take in account how much. Uh, I need to pay my rent. How na how much uh, are my bills? So you, are, when you have a precise idea of how much would be to live one day of your life or one month of your life, you can give yourself an hypothetical salary and then <laughs> raise the bar because you're a freelancer. Uh, then depends on how much you are uh, uh, experience you have. So the more experience you have, uh, the more high is your daily rate. I think that. There is uh, like something that goes like a range, a daily range that could go between uh, 100 euros a day, 150 and 600 dollars a day. Uh, I mean, it really, it really depends. Yeah. And we have one other question from. OK, yeah. a suggestion by Adina for this website for illustration. And so Vincent asks, um, does the number of pieces matter in a portfolio? If one has less than five with dev projects with a lot of exploration, is it valid for a job application or not? You don't have to have five different uh, visual, visual development projects. One that is very well explored is fine. Uh, I think that at least at least 10 pages in your portfolio 
and not more than uh, not, not too many because a person don't have the time again <laughs> so i would say not many not more than 25 25 are a lot uh, 30 and if you have an ex 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 exceptional uh, portfolio that you're proud of and every piece count and every piece is consistent and uh, all the process uh, is really important if you think that every bit is done with care and is important to uh, tell the story and tell the and uh, tell about the characters and tell about uh, as your process as an artist you can put more but i wouldn't wouldn't go other than 30 pages and i wouldn't stay less than 10. yeah this this was really Precious. It, yeah, yeah. We well, we we talked for a lot, a long time, one hour and a half. It was really but a pleasure. If you want, uh, we could uh, do with a uh, one more question. Oh, if anyone wants to ask one last question, just guys, yeah, ask. <laughs> and be fast <laughs> but i think yeah they asked so many interesting questions and oh well, I, I can ask when when sure. uh, is your game uh, out and it's, when can we yeah when can we play that where can we play that <laughs> it's already out is uh, the, in the very first stage so we are uh, uh, almost on the uh, uh, reaching the day to release the new content pack with all the new contents and uh, part and stories, but you can find it uh, on uh, the Play Store. It's uh, called uh, Sunshine Days. I can uh, leave you the link to this if you want. Yes, of course. I'm really curious. Now we heard about the backstage <laughs> a little bit. Link three. Perfect. It's a chilling M MMO uh, for uh, for Androids and for PC, but I think that the version for PC is still in the beta testing. So, uh, but the one uh, for, um, for 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 phone is uh, is free to play. Amazing. So I will definitely try this one. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. I said it a hundred times, I'm saying it again. It was such a pleasure. I'm so happy we started with you. Um, it was funny and so informative also and really inspiring, which is like the most beautiful thing we can get uh, by these meetings. And also to see your beautiful work, to prepare the presentation, it was, I, I was having a great time and you have so much stuff it's amazing thank and thank you for being a wonderful host i mean i was super excited and a bit nervous in the beginning i was like oh my god i will forget how to how to talk and uh, who am i <laughs> am i an artist <laughs> so but no. you really put me at ease and uh, uh and it was fun to chat with you with you all and uh, thank you it was a great experience that's right the second time melissa you were wonderful and uh yeah. Rachel as well you were you're a professional we should do this more often we should invite people like elisa and make this a uh, tradition and uh, elisa always make sure that we have uh, elisa has the information so she can also get involved uh, yes yes she's always on board with these talks i think this is really useful for everybody and i want to thank you again for everybody to everybody for being here yeah, I also think that maybe if someone else wants to join the party and also be a co-host, maybe we, we can do that. And yeah. also, I, I can't say, but I have other ex-students who already said yes to the interviews. I'm going to keep this like a secret to have a surprise, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they are right. really happy to have this space and I'm really happy to to help with this one. Fantastic. It's and uh, if you guys can think or if you meet some uh, interesting artists that are not just IDEA uh, alumni, it's maybe completely unrelated to IDEA, but if you meet people that you like to hear from, just um, talk to them and uh, write to Rachel and maybe we can invite these people. I'm sure that the different perspectives will be interesting for everybody. 
So. And you don't get me started, I will like become a stalker of artists <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> It's exactly where I'm pushing you. So. Oh, okay, perfect. I'm going to be a stalker. Nice. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, and have a great night. Ciao, ciao. You too. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. 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 See you soon. Thank, Thank you so bye. much. Bye. bye.